All right, guys, and now I want to do a quick lesson on the square of the pawn and something called the red eye position or the red eye study, which is based on the concept of the square of the pawn. So right now white is going up and black is going down. Both sides have a pawn each, but it seems that white's pawn is first, but black's pawn is actually more scary for white's king than uh, the white pawn for the black king, because as we can see here, uh, the black king is in the square of the white pawn and let's make the square together I've done it in one of the earlier le lectures, but let's try it again So you always go towards the queen in square So let's say I'm, a, I'm the pawn and I'm calculating if the king can catch up to me or not So I will go towards the queen in square So the pawn the queen in square and that took me two moves right to get to c8 So now I will go two squares sideways towards the king and I will land on a6 and then I will go two squares diagonally so the square will actually be the square of the pawn the promotion square uh, the diagonal towards the side of the king so if the king is on the left I will go towards the left if the king was on the right then I would go towards the right uh, in this case this is the triangle and to finish the square I just need to uh, take a line to the side so just a line horizontally to the left and I get the king and that's the square of the pawn if the king is in the square he can catch the pawn no matter how fast it tries to run uh, if the king was outside the square let's say it was on a5 instead of a6 and it was white to move uh, then white is faster and black cannot catch up to the pawn if it was black to move black just has enough time to catch up uh, to the pawn and get into the square if the king is in the square uh, then the pawn is in big trouble because it doesn't have enough time to run and promote the black king will eat it first uh, if you look at the square of this pawn you can say so where is the square so let's do it from h5 the first corner is the h5 square is the pawn itself then we go to the promotion square we take one two three four steps down to h1 so it's four squares then we go four uh, squares diagonally to the side of the king in this case there is only one side we can only go left so it must be to d1 four squares and then we take four squares to the only side we can which is now left uh, if this king was on this side on on the right then i would go towards the right but clearly that's not possible here so uh, the square is h5 h1 d1 and d5 those are the two uh, i should say four corners we can use here okay uh, and now we know the square of each pawn it becomes apparent that this king can catch the white pawn but the white king cannot unless it cheats a little and that's where the red eye position comes to play so what's the red eye position there was a guy named Richard Reti he lived or red eye um, uh, he lived a long time ago in, in uh, uh, the beginning of the 20th century and uh, he was playing around with pawn end games and he thought what if we combine the squares of both pawns and if we combine the threat of promotion with catching up to the other pawn square let's see where that will take us so the white king seems too far away but he can cheat so he starts going towards both pawns at once he doesn't go here because this would end very tragically for the white king he can chase for a long time but in the end it's just a matter of time before black gets a queen and then white will lose instead of that the black king get or i should say the white king gets very sneaky he starts going towards his own pawn and the point is that after uh, the black pawn tries to go to h4 and promote then we go to f6 and we are going towards our pawn and their pawn at the same time if he is really uh, stubborn and can only push the pawn and can only think about that and doesn't realize the point of white's plan white actually has this move and now it turns out that it doesn't matter that the black king is in the square because the white king can support the pawn until it reaches the end so for example black goes here white will play c7 uh, if black gets a queen white gets a queen with check and that's a draw 
if black tries to be stubborn and catch up our pawn then we will be stubborn as well and our king is just in time to get a queen for us as well and that's another draw with a queen each so it seems that black has no way to win so let's try a different way that black can try to win so we put everything back and this is the study so after the move king to g7 uh, black can try to raise the pawn once but after we go to f6 black will try to stop our pawn with his own king so he will try to eat it up but that's where this move comes in so key five and we are heading towards both pawns at the same time towards both squares and in this way we cheat because we force him to take the pawn if he doesn't take the pawn we will queen our pawn so he will go to h2 we'll go to c7 he promotes we promote at the same time and if he takes the pawn then voila suddenly we are in the square of the pawn uh, we should even play king to f4 so, uh, as to eat the pawn even faster and the black king is helpless because now we're in the square and the black king is too far away and we're gonna eat the black pawn so even though it looked like there was no way we could ever catch up to the black pawn we managed because we uh, kind of cheated using our square as a threat to steal two moves in order to get into the square of this black pawn after which it's a drawn position one last thing I'll mention about the square of the pawn when you guys are calculating uh, the squares of pawns on the second or the seventh uh, how do we do it because the pawn can actually go twice and that's where it becomes a bit tricky the way I do it I just pretend that the pawn is on uh, a3 for the purpose of this uh, rule of the square just pretend that the pawn is not on a2 it's on the third rank and it's not on h7 it's actually on h6 and I draw the square from there so if the king black king is in the square of this pawn then he will be in the square of the a2 pawn and if the white king is in the square of the h6 pawn then he will be in the square of the h7 pawn that's an easy way to imagine uh, the square of that pawn uh, otherwise a lot of people do try to calculate they say uh, pawn goes here i go here pawn goes there i go here uh, and they keep calculating until they get to the end but that's such a complicated version and people often get confused especially when there are pawns on both sides that's why the rule of the square makes it easier for us to figure out if the king is in time or uh, to catch the pawn or not